All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the real deal versus clones. Which one should you buy? Is there any validity in buying knockoffs or clones or um, collaborations? And or should you just go for the real deal? So today we're going to be comparing the real Hinder XM18 versus the ZT0462 in carbon fiber. Now the reason I wanted to compare these two is because they are direct inspirations of each other, or at least um, this is the predecessor to this, or this is the knife, the 0462, or 562, sorry, is what's directly inspired by the XM18, three and a half inch. They both have the same steel, and they have a lot of commonalities. Now of course they do have different blade shapes and slightly different you know, aesthetics. This one has a carbon fiber handle. This one has titanium and uh, G10, but by and large, they're pretty darn similar. Now, for the sake of uh, this conversation too, there's a lot of different terms like clone, collaboration, knockoff, and knockoffs and clones generally are things that are blades taken from or designs, steels, performance, taken from a original equipment manufacturer or original maker of a knife and just directly ripped off without any type of, you know, um, without any type of credit, without any type of dues paid, or without any, you know, type of, um, without taking any credit or without giving any credit, I should say, to the original person or designer that made it. So this is obviously not the case. ZT even has hinder design written on this blade, and so this is definitely a kosher collaboration. But ultimately, what I mean kind of like knockoff or, you know, a a collaboration, I'm trying to refer to the ones that are legitimate, because of course, whenever you buy any type of Chinese knockoff blade, uh, whether it be a direct ripoff of a design or its own independent design, there are a number of quality and questionable features to it. So when we're talking about this, just kind of setting the ground rules that really, realistically, you probably should just be buying different collaborations that are legitimate. And nowadays, especially nowadays with Knives or companies like we or companies like uh, companies like we or companies like Saviti, they are working directly with knife makers through a more formal process to bring designs um, out. So even if you do want to get more budget versions of legitimate collaborations, I would recommend you know sticking to reputable companies that are actually collaborating with the designer. So anyways, with that kind of spiel out of the way, let's talk about these two blades. So ultimately, are there any pros to a collaboration? I think there definitely are a number of pros. The biggest one, of course, really has to relate to the price and design. And ultimately, I really think that my ZT here is probably one of my favorite ones to talk about in this regard that because this knife is about half the price of the real deal, the real hinderer, it definitely means that one, you get to experience a lot of the design, the taste, the purpose of why a you know more expensive or more high-end knife is made the way it is. And also two, it gives you the ability, I think, to have a more hard using blade. For me, you know, when it comes to let's say cutting open a bag of uh, concrete or quick crete, whatever you know you want to use, do you want to use a you know two hundred dollar knife or do you want to use a six hundred or four hundred dollar you know blade that is really going to be quite high quality versus you know the one that isn't quite as high quality so i think the, the choice is obviously pretty apparent you want to use the cheaper one and ultimately you feel less bad most people i should say feel less bad when their you know lower end or more budget oriented knives get damaged now another great comparison would be probably something like the curse Shaw Emerson collaborations where pretty much every CQC that Emerson makes is collaborated with Kershaw to bring really affordable like D2 versions of things like the CQC8, CQC6, CQC7. Um, and the, once again, those are under $50 most of the time. And so gives you a really good, once again, taste of what that knife would be like or perform like if you had an Emerson CQC, you know, whatever. Um, but it also allows you to have a real user because you might not want to use your three or $400 limited edition Emerson to cut open a bag of rocks. 
So, you know, it's it allows you to have, you know, a lot of the design aesthetic that you already like. And that's something for me that, like, once again, I do actively EDC both of these knives. So there's a familiarity when it comes to my, you know, nicer Hinderer XM18 that, you know, this kind of feels the same way this feels. It kind of looks the same way. There's a lot of similar performance. Obviously, your XM18s usually do have a nice choil. ZTs don't normally have that nice choil. But for the most part, you know, most of your performance is going to be the same. Very smooth. Both of them are running on ball bearing um, pivots. Um, both of them using, are both using the same steel. So similar performance, similar handling, and there's a lot of similarity in that. So that's a big thing for me that, you know, my user and my abuser it performs the same way as some of my higher end carry blades. Now, like I said too, it is also nice because if you are getting into or if you are new to the everyday carry field, you're not probably going to want to throw down, you know, thousands of dollars on EDC knives like such. And so getting something like a um, hinderer design, getting things like an Emerson design, getting a, you know, different types of designs, even striders, you know, it gives you the ability to say, you know, do I actually like the way this knife feels? Do I like the way this knife performs? Do I like the way that uh, this knife is or the size, the weight? Um, you know, do I like that overall aesthetic of blade? And if it's a yes, then you might end up going forward and buying a more expensive version of that knife. And so, you know, one that I unfortunately don't have to show here just yet is you know I have a um, Protec Strider Auto and or SNG Auto and I have a you know Strider SNG and so if you end up getting the you know Protec Strider SNG Auto for $150 like uh, I did you know it might open your eyes to saying hey you know I really like that Strider design and I really want to get an, a, a real SNG instead of the uh, Protec collaboration and so I kind of honestly did the reverse in that situation but my story is a little bit different with Strider anyways but that can be you know one way that you, know, you end up getting the Strider SNG from Protec for like I said 150 bucks and the real Striders are close to over or north of $600, like $650. So if you like that Strider uh, design, that aesthetic, and you like the ergonomics overall, it might be worth trying to get in on one of the limited drops for a Strider SNG. So if you're newer to the community and like I said, your knife tastes aren't quite as established, you don't necessarily know what you want, it is a really good way, um, collaborations are a really good way to get into knives and say, hey, I really like that design, I really like that aesthetic, I really like how that knife is built, and I want the real version of it or the original version of that knife. So that's another solid point for me um, that I really like when it comes to the knives. First, primarily for me, most of the collaborations, like I said, the Protect Strider um, that I have or have coming, the ZT Hinder collaboration I have, and a few of my other collaboration knives, um, I've primarily gotten them because I like harder, or I like the ability to harder use them or have hard use blades. Anyways, so like I said, most of the reason why I own the collaborations is because of the kind of congruency of, once again, I carry a real Strider, use this, um, you know, I use this real Strider, carry the real Strider, and so having an automatic version or a cheaper version of that knife that I'm less afraid to abuse and hard use is handy. So it still has a lot of the same features performance um, that these do. Now the last point, um, so the last point, and sometimes this isn't always the case with um, collabor collaboratory knives, is sometimes the design is different. So kind of going back to the Strider versus the Protec Strider um, SNG and PT that they collaborate with for Protec is that they are both automatics. So Protec, of course, is very well known for their automatics. So they make you know an automatic version of the SNG and they make an automatic version of the PT. And so once again, these are things that you cannot get from Strider themselves. They do not, Strider themselves do not make automatic versions of these knives. So if you're one of those people that does want an automatic version of said knife, that is a really good way to kind of get into one and, you know, get a design that you're already familiar with, a design you already like, but in something that you may want a little more. And so that's also part of the reason why I wanted to get a auto SNG is because I really already love my SNG, but I think having an automatic push button release 
um, SMG would be even cooler. So for me, that's another um, thing that collaborations can have or can bring to the table is because you're including multiple makers, once again, like ProTech or like ZT, they're going to have their own materials, they're going to have their own ways and their own methods about doing it. Um, you know, once again, another fair point with the uh, ZT here is that, you know, um, Hinderer doesn't really use carbon fiber. And granted, you can certainly get aftermarket scales that are carbon fiber for real striders. You can't really get a real um, Hinderer, sorry, I should say Hinderer, you can't really get a real Hinderer carbon fiber scale. So once again, ZT brings some value there by offering, you know, a stock um, carbon fiber handle scale for your knife. So anyways, those are basically the big points to hit home with um, collaborations. I do think they're worth it, whether you're looking to get into a knife that's cheap and has similar, you know, uh, design purposes and intentions so that you can test out a knife to see if a particular designer is a designer that you would want to buy knives from, um, or whether you're looking for a knife that has different applications, a little bit different designs, a little bit different materials that you might want more than um, the stock or original manufacturers materials or designs that's another valid reason and ultimately they are definitely worth it once again you'll see a number of collaboration knives right next to the real deal versions in my collection um, so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out